Last episode, I built a cliff, a warehouse, and a monorail. And this time, we build a brand new train depot inside a mountain, extend our main line, and build a shiny new train to transport our goods 5,000 blocks back to base. But before we can do anything at all, we need to do a whole lot of digging. Hence the train. And the digging we need to do is to basically come off this track. I think we're going to keep going in a straight line for a while, so there's going to be a nice tunnel underground. And then directly under this warehouse, and pretty much under this entire area here, we need to carve out a massive cavern. So I guess the best thing I can do to start is just figure out exactly where the rail is going to go into this mountain over here. Which it would seem is going to be at that angle. And I should, if I put some rail on this train here, I should just be able to use this to do it. So let's turn on the drills. We can also turn on the prodders because although we've got lots of prodders on here, none of them actually have anything to place apart from the one in the front. So we should just get rail. At least that's the hope. Let's see what happens. Yep, this looks like it's going to work. I'll bring you back in once I've got a massive hole under this mountain. It's a mighty big cave, we've got lots of rail, we've got lots of creepers, and, uh, well, we haven't got any lights whatsoever. But I do have my brightness turned up to a thousand, as I tend to do when I'm working underground like this, but, uh, yeah, we need to get some proper lights in. And I still do need to actually expand it out a little bit further here and there. I don't like the fact these tunnels go right up to the edge. But my thinking is I wanted to turn this into a bit more of a train depot type area, so although we don't really need more than one track, I think it's going to work a lot better just by having the five. Two of these can just be used for parking trains, and the idea is the other three actually loop all the way around. So if we go through this central tunnel, we can see how one connects from this side. We've got another one that connects from here, and this can also do a loop-de-loop -loop on the inside here. And then this all connects to the outside, and now it connects back onto the main rail. So once I get some train signals, we can probably get away with getting rid of this horrible loop-de-loop, -loop, which I've been looking forward to for a long time because it's horrible. And once we've got all the signals in place, we'll be able to control the train traffic as well so anything coming this way can actually go off and go into the freight area if needed and i'm probably going to switch it up so the passenger train stops here and then goes off and into the tunnel and then just uses the far side track to loop back onto the main line so yeah it should be lots of fun but i'm going to need a whole load of train signals to make that happen so let's go grab some of them and then we'll make a start on figuring out how it's going to work inside so i've got a bunch of train signals but first up let's clear up the rail around here a little bit we don't need these bits anymore and that's signaling should work for that so this can go in both directions these ones go in one direction or the other now these are all going to be fairly complicated methinks but i think we can simplify this by just cutting off the entire junction so this one can go in both directions as can the one on that side and each of the in-between ones can only come this way because they're going to be the loading platforms I've also put the signals in on this side, and they're basically all pointing in that direction, apart from this one, which can go in both. Then I guess we're going to need one there to separate that bit. We're going to need one here to separate that bit. And these ones here should be doing their thing as well. So I think that is correct, but what we can easily do to check is just fly over and look at the colours and make sure that the splits are in the right place, which it appears they are over here. So if I bring this train in and park it up, then it should enable the passenger train to keep on running. Although, to be honest, this thing's probably going to be in the way while we're sorting out down here. It's pretty big. I don't think we're going to need it anymore, so let's just take it home. We'll get rid of this. And when we come back, we can actually make a start on figuring out what this place is going to look like and how it's going to work. With that train gone, we can see a bit better what we're working with. And what I'm trying to do is work out exactly how things are going to... Well, how they're going to work, really. How they're going to get transported from up there down to here and how they're going to get from here onto the train. And I think what we probably want to do is have a load of vaults down here and have that as the main storage instead of using those drawers we put in last time. So if we quickly break through to the top here, this is what we've got at the moment. And I think I want to change all this up, which is why I didn't do anything with it in the first place last episode. But I think what we want to be doing is literally just unloading stuff here and not actually storing it. What I'd like to do is unload it here. We'll have some cool system. We'll make it look all nicey-nicey in here. And then have that all feed down directly into vaults down the bottom here. And then this is where we'll have the redstone links and so on. Which is something else we need to change. Because although it works for this particular setup, as soon as we start taking stuff to the other factory, we're going to have some problems. 
But we don't need to worry about that for now. For now, we can just get everything shuffled around a bit. But I think I'm going to start off by sorting out the floor down here. So I don't want to have the rails sunk down compared to the rest of the room. So I think we're going to be building up either side here. I also need to push these walls back a bit because, as I say, I don't like the way those tunnels connect up here. So let's do a whole bunch of block placing and I'll bring you back in in just a moment. I think a big old platform like that should do the trick just nicely. But now we need to grab ourselves a bunch of vaults and we need to just build up a storage facility down here. And once we've got those in, we can start connecting the systems together. So I added some vaults and used brass funnels on the train side, leading into a set of storage interfaces as a simple way to load the train when we eventually build it. I then hooked up a bunch of conveyor belts on the alternate side, which would carry the resources down from the monorail above and then sort them into the vaults ready for transport back to main storage. I added a threshold switch and a redstone link to each and every vault similar to how we did with the drawers before. However, this time I set the capacity to 50% and inverted the signal for reasons we'll get into shortly. I then set everything off and stood around a while just checking to make sure everything was working as expected. And it almost is. The only problem we had is that despite having these set to 50% and then turning off, because of how much we're backing up over at the other warehouse, it still kind of got a little bit over full. So what I've done now is I've actually lowered that to 40% just in the hope that we can have to burn less stuff. I mean, it's not the end of the world if we get too much. We'll just burn the excess, and it's only ever a stack or two, but I'd still rather avoid it if we can. So something I have done is inverted the signal. So if we go down to one here that's not actually going to mess up the system, what I've been doing is setting these to 40% there, 20% there, and normally it will be like this. So once something is full, it will then send out a redstone signal. But I've been inverting that because what I want it to actually do is to send a signal to say, hey, I need need some of whatever this resource is and then that will start releasing it at the top because that way when I start building factories that need things like cobblestone I can do the same thing I can have them say hey I'm low on cobblestone it will send a signal up to the warehouse over there and then it will start letting cobblestone out. I think that's definitely going to be the safer way for us to do it. Because otherwise, if these vaults down here got full and then sent out a signal to say, hey, don't let any more cobblestone out, then the factories over this side that need cobblestone aren't actually going to be able to get hold of it anymore. And that's just really not going to help us whatsoever. So I'm hoping this system is going to be a little bit more future-proof. The only other thing to consider now is the trains, because of course, well, we've got lots of collection points for each of the trains because we're collecting from each of the individual vaults. But I think I have a plan for the trains and what we'll probably do is have a big engine. We'll have maybe four or five freight carts, but we'll only probably have the front two actually collecting stuff. And then we'll just have different stations here because that way I can have one freight train that comes in and just collects from these two. And then I can have another freight train that comes in and collects from the next two and so on. And that way we don't have to massively expand the offloading system we have at the other end because that'd be a nightmare. And as we get more factories and more resources down here, we can add in more stations. I am actually tempted to remove one of these tracks here, probably this one and actually stick another sort of platform in here. But I don't really know. We'll see what happens as we develop the area further. For now, though, we know this works. We just need to see if we need to actually adjust anything once we get a train in here. And in fact, I'm going to quickly chase that train down because something I want to do is change what station it visits. Because currently it goes to platform two and the only way for it to actually get there is to go, well, as you just saw, right through where the freight train is. So if we change this and set this to Stone Peaks Valley, platform two. Now it should follow this track round, come in this way, and then when it leaves, it will actually be forced to go on the far track and so on. And that should keep it out the way of the freight train. At least that's the hope. So let's send it on its way and see what happens, I guess. I think we're in a good position now to actually maybe potentially build this new train. But as usual, I think it's going to make sense for us to go back to main storage and build that train. The only measurements we really need to know is the fact that we have four of these on each carriage and they're one block apart. And then we need three blocks in between each carriage. So I think we can work within those constraints. And at the end of the day, if we do need to move something, we can. It's not the end of the world. So let's go grab our little train here and head home. I feel like we haven't built a proper new train in ages. I'm very much looking forward to this. And just as an afterthought, should we put a lava tank down here as well to transport lava back to main base? That's probably not a bad idea, but we'll tackle that later. For now, let's go build a freight train. Now, if we're going to make a train and it's going to be a freight train, I think we're going to need quite a long engine on this one, at least a little bit bigger than what we have been doing. And to make engines, we do, of course, need some crushing wheels. So it looks like that's turned on. Let's start off by making a bunch of these. Although to make this a little bit easier, I'm just going to sneak around the back here. I'm going to connect all of these outside ones, just like that. And now I should be able to load this thing up a lot quicker because we can just do that. We can do that. And as soon as we put andesite here, it's going to put it in every single slot. And apparently it's not turned on. There we go. Right, let's make a whole bunch of these. 
We have a bunch of crushing wheels. Let's go see if we can make a train. And it's probably going to look similar to all my other trains because I don't know how to build anything else. But we'll try. We'll try. So I think we'll give this one a nice metallic base. And as I say, we do want this one to be a bit bigger than a normal train. And we're going to need a buttload of framed blocks as well. But we have a whole wall of stuff here. So let's just get this front bit on. We know how that's going to look. And then we want to figure out how long the engine's going to be. As I say, this is going to be quite a large freight train. It's going to need a lot of power. So maybe we'll have eight crushing wheels as the big steam engine-y parts. Then we'll get some chutes in the side here as well, just because we like how they look. And I think I want to go for a red engine this time. We haven't done anything nice and bright yet. Maybe we can try some sidey slopey bits there and let's get this top bit in as well and maybe even build up the sides a bit here we'll get some shapey bits on top there as well Ugh, no that looks horrible do i want to use pipes down there maybe i mean they look quite cool but i'm not sure yet i'm quite liking that shape i think it's gonna work nicely but we really could do with a bit of texturing on these blocks here so i wonder what can we get out of the masonry table that's quite nice we could potentially use some of those although they look pretty good as well hmm let's have a little play around see what we can do yeah they look cool i like those and we'll make sure we get the color of the smoke correct off the bat this time. We'll make it light gray. Wonderful. Right, now let's sort out some windows for this thing. And a roof. That'll be helpful. So for the roof, we'll keep things nice and simple as always. And for windows, let's try those out. Hmm, not so sure on those. Maybe the tinted glass will work well. Yes, yeah, a bit more subtle. I think I prefer that. But then maybe a mangrove trapdoor would be a good idea as well. The mangrove should fit quite nicely on this one. Yeah, let's grab a couple of mangrove trapdoors and see if we can make some window frames. So we could try something like that. But yeah, let's uh, let's do that a bit better, shall we? So if we maybe try putting that in from the inside. And didn't I make some other ones? Yeah, there we go. These ones here. I'm still not sold, if I'm perfectly honest. I think I preferred it when it was just the tinted glass. Maybe we could do a little bit of a mix, something like that. Actually, that looks quite nice. I like that. Yeah, I'm quite liking the shape. It looks almost identical to the rest of my trains, but this one has pipes. So I have just had an idea. If we get rid of those trapdoors and use copycat panels instead and maybe put those iron bars on. How's that look? Maybe I should use them down here instead. Oh, yeah, I quite like that, actually. That's looking pretty cool. Yeah, we'll put this bit back to how it was. But I do quite like the grills over there. Do we want that carrying across on these as well? Mm, maybe not. Oh, I don't know, actually. Do we like that or is it too much? So that's with and that's without. I think I prefer it without, you know. I do like it over here, though. We'll get a couple of valves on the back. We need a ladder, so let's try these out. We probably want the gold one, I'd imagine. Do we want andesite? Ah, that looks too bland. Let's go with the brass, not gold. Perfect. But I think the last thing I want to do is just put a bit more of an edge on that roof there. Although it would help if I use the right blocks. We'll swap out these slabs for stairs. So let's just quickly colour all of these. All right, I think we're there. That's our engine, at least. Now we need to do a tender. And for an engine this big, we're going to need a fairly large tender, I would imagine. So let's get some triple axles out. And maybe that length. Is that, is that too long? Uh, no, that's probably going to be about right, I think, once we've got it built up. So let's get our trusty chutes out and jam all those in. Then we'll use the cut red terracotta again, I think. Although I do need to make these those kind of half wall type things, don't I? So let's do this for the outside ones. Although thinking about it, at the back here is more likely going to be the water tank. So we don't actually need to send this all the way to the back here. So we'll just do something like that for the water tank. Let's get the rest of these panels in and get ourselves some cut. Hole. And then we'll get some slopey bits in as well. And maybe we should get a big one down the bottom there. If we do that, that should raise that up. And we'll get some of these bits on the top here as well. And cover those. And we'll use a couple of floorboards to cover up those bits. But I think... That should just about do it for the tender. It doesn't really need to be much more than that. Though I am going to change the position of that bogey there. Let's move it over by one. Though we could maybe get some andesite bars on there again. They do look quite good. Maybe a ladder up the side as well. Although I think that should be gold. So let's stick a brass ladder in there instead. Yeah, that's looking much better. Okay, so we've got the train. We've got the tender. Now we need to actually just make a start on the carriages that are going to go here. And something else we are actually going to need to do 
is adjust this so we can actually offload the carriages when they get here. But we'll solve that later. For now, let's just see what we can do. So I've made a start on the freight carriages here, and I think I've got it worked out because we need to bear in mind the measurements at the other end, which is essentially we have collection points, then a space, then a collection point, then a space, but they're in sets of four. And the idea was that each one of those sets of four would align to a carriage. And in between each set of four, we have three spaces. So in theory, if I get that back on there, so in theory, this should all line up and i've put these ones in the middle just to hide them a bit more but yeah this one i, I can't because of where the bogey is but that's fine although i'm looking at it i could probably move that bogey back mm, i'm not sold it looks a bit weird now doesn't it it's fine we'll only have the one visible at the front here but the rest of these should all be able to connect and as long as we add in one there and one there we'll also be able to offload nicely in fact, let's quickly just put those in now. Beautiful. So at least we know the offloading is going to work. And this is actually already lined up to the station as well. So, yep, perfectly aligned. Now let's figure out the containers that are going to sit on the back here. I don't know what sort of size we want them to be. So let's just jam something in for now. I mean, it would make sense for them to be the same size as the ones at the other end, which is six blocks. So they're going to be that size. And what we can maybe do is give them a little bit of support at the back. Nope, that's really not working for me. I'm just going to mess around with these a little bit and until I get them looking nice, and once I do, well, we can make a whole buttload of them, can't we? But for now, this isn't really working. All right, I think I've got something I'm happy with. It's fairly straightforward. I've basically just replaced this bottom bit here with girders, and then I've sort of clicked them here to make sure it's all attached. Added some railed ladder onto the side and some rails on top just to kind of strap it down, and I think that's going to work quite nicely. If you imagine a whole row of these going down the track, I think that's going to look pretty cool. Not 100% on whether I'll keep the ladders or not, but I do quite like them. Although without the ladders, it does also kind of work. It just looks a bit boring. We'll add a few more containers and then we'll make a decision. We'll put ladders on some, not ladders on the others, and we'll just see what we think works. And when it comes to storage, I think we'll just dump a bunch of barrels inside here. And a few minutes later, I think that's probably enough wagons on that. We've got six or seven there, and I know freight trains usually have 50 of these things, but, well, that would just be ridiculous. And to be honest, I definitely prefer them without the ladders as well. I did put ladders on a few of them, but it just didn't really work for me. It looked a little bit too busy, but I think with that, this train is potentially actually ready. I just need to glue the whole thing together and then drive it to the other end of the map and hope it all lines up. So hopefully it's all stuck together. I guess this is where we find out. And it seemed to work. Oh, geez, we need to name another train. You know what to do. Give me a name in the comments because I'm terrible at this. So I'm just going to call it Freight for now. What a genius. And let's see if we've left anything behind or have we got everything stuck together first time. So it looks like we left a few rails behind. I'm assuming that's from the back of the tender. There's always something. Right, let's take this train out for a spin. So good news and bad news. The good news is we've got the alignment correct. It is four and one space in between. However, I've put the one block too low. So let's quickly get a station in and try and get it in roughly the right place. Looks like I need to go back one more spot. Okay, so things are now aligned. However, we do need to leave this one at the bottom here because this is the one that actually connects at the other end at the right height. But if we disassemble this train and just get rid of all these storage interfaces we put at the bottom, we don't need them anymore. What we can do is put these in the right place now. So let me grab this. And I think we're just going to put six barrels in each carriage. That should be more than enough. Now we just need to do the same thing on this one, which apparently I forgot to put the barrels in anyway. So that's probably not a bad thing. There we go. And now when I assemble this train, in theory, it should start loading up with all of these bits here. And it may even take enough to trigger the everything again. I don't know. Let's see. So let's assemble the train again. And yep, look at that. It's loading up. Beautiful. And it's loading up a little bit of everything. Now, what I'm going to do is actually set this station up properly. So let's put that there and we'll put it in the wall, I think, and give it a name. In fact, I'm just going to bury it down here. And this is Stone Valley Peaks Warehouse Platform 1, we'll call this. Now, let's make a train schedule. So we want this to travel to Warehouse 1 until you are empty. Oh, turns out it wasn't Warehouse 1. That's completely the wrong place. So it's actually storage one is the one we want. Once again, we'll set that to less than one item. And then you can come back to SVP Warehouse. 
And I think I'm going to do this one time based because otherwise we're going to end up with lots and lots of scoria currently because there's never really enough clay to fill that up. Or well, this one here, I should say, and as you can see, look, so the clay and the flint has run out and this thing is, yeah, so that's got 8,000 scoria and we've got like 3,000 of everything else. So in order to prevent that happening, we'll just set this thing to a timer. And I think that's all we need to do. And now he's following the schedule. Let's sit down and make sure it does what it's supposed to. Uh oh, this is a problem. So what I've forgotten to do here is actually set these to the brass versions. And that means they will only enter a section if they can leave the other side. And that would have actually stopped this one from doing what it just did. So let's just send that train on its way. And I'm going to quickly fix the rest of the signals here. So these ones should also be brass. Right, that should hopefully solve that problem. So let's get him back on his track. And we're probably not going to be able to catch it now. Oh, no, tell a lie. So because we've got a 4,000 stretch of track here and we've only got the one sort of signal box here and there. In fact, we've only got one at each end. Because the passenger train is somewhere on this track here, it's not going to let us pass. So something I do need to do is run up and down this track and just put in a bunch of signal points just to break the track into sections. And that's going to keep things running a bit more fluid. But for now, I can wait patiently. Oh, here we go. We're on our way again. So I just need to make a slight adjustment over here. This one here did in fact link up and it's been doing its thing. This is all good. Oh, there's a creepy boy. But this one here is ever so slightly misaligned. So let's just do that and reassemble. And there we go. Now that one's unloading too. I do need to get some funnels on this vault so it can actually unload. But well, it's quite dangerous down there at the moment. So let's have a kit. There we go. So that should offload all those as well. And once this thing finishes offloading, it should head off back to the other warehouse. The other train should be okay doing their thing. I think what I need to do, though, because we've got quite a few trains running around here now, because we've got the logging train coming as well. Look, in fact, here it comes now. Um, how's, how's all this going to work? Is he just going to wait at the back there? Okay, so he's basically blocking that until this is unloaded. And that means if the passenger train was coming in at a certain time, that would cause a delay for that. Nah, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. I have an arrow in my face. So yeah, there might be a few train delays and things like that. But overall, it should be okay, I think. I mean, I could speed up the unloading here. That would probably help. But when that train does head off, I should release the track for this one. All right. So I think what I am going to need to do, though, is put in a few more of these brass ones. Just to make sure... The things are only leaving and coming up here and blocking up when they can because in theory he should just be able to wait on the bridge instead of blocking everything but i'm gonna stand here and watch this for a little while we'll see how our trains do and hopefully we'll just see a bunch of trains coming in and out without any issue but <laughs> well we'll see we'll have to keep an eye out for messages down the bottom as well telling us that trains have crashed or whatever <laughs> Well, the trains looked like they were doing their thing and working marvellously. However, they were a bit slow. And, well, that's because we need to get all of these signals down along this track just to break it into chunks. I think we'll put another one here. I quite like having them near the tunnels. I think that kind of makes sense. I've now broken that 4,000 block area into about six or seven different sections. That should keep the trains flowing a little bit nicer. But now we have a whole other problem, and, and that is that is this. This area looks an absolute mess. And we've got a bunch of work to do over here. I do want to have an entrance, so when we get off the train here, we can actually just go straight over to this station. But yeah, it needs a lot of work, as you can see. I also still need to push these walls back, and I need to make this whole room look a little bit nicer. Might be quite nice to get a sign up here as well, just sort of letting us know not only what resources we've got, 
but also when the train's due to come collect stuff. We also need to swap out the floor in here for gravel, and I need to... I mean, do I need to decide what I'm doing over here yet, or shall I just gravel the whole thing? Maybe I'll do that for now, because then that's going to leave the options open when we start adding new farms. If we do need to add an additional station, it'll be nice to have not already built a massive thing there we have to tear down. And if we don't need to add another station, having the extra tracks won't be a bad thing anyway. So I've got some digging to do, a ceiling to put in, some tunnels to build, and some signs to put up. But sadly, that's gonna have to wait for the next episode, because I've just spent about three hours, three hours, sorting out train schedules, signaling, preventing crashes, and trying to work out why certain things weren't loading when they should have been. But as you can see, the trains are working now. Oh, where's this track? Okay, that was weird. That was, that was quite spooky. But sadly, that is all we've got time for today because I'm about to go on holiday. And if I don't wrap this video up now, then you're not going to have a video this week at all. But we should be back to our regularly scheduled programming from next week and everything should get a little bit more back to normal. But thank you very much for hanging out. If you have enjoyed it, then... Uh oh. I think it's best I just went now.